Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the tips and tricks for uh, transport fever. So, uh, I noticed uh, we should start off with uh, some very basic things that uh, some people don't even know that exist and uh, I realized that some people still aren't using or aware of. So first off, you can click on the money and uh, generally every time you start the game you do have a loan. You're gonna have to repay that loan, preferably as quickly as possible because you do have a loan interest that clicks every month. And uh, when you're starting off, I don't know, you can get anywhere between 200 to 600,000 uh, that you're paying back every month. So it's pretty steep. So try to pay off your loan. Of course, you can borrow. You can borrow up to 100 million. And uh, of course, the interest rate keeps going up. So I believe the interest rate maxes out with 100 million at 1.5 million a month. So uh, the game does not fail you. So in case you keep going into negative, it's up to you to actually quit the game and start again but you can borrow up to 100 million. Again, my uh, word of advice is to pay it back as quick as possible. Now, in terms of the line manager, this is something actually pretty, pretty cool. If you click the line manager, you can uh, actually see that uh, you have all the lines that you can manage, how much income they have. But this nice little gear thing is very useful, especially for example, you have a massive line with a lot of vehicles. I don't know, let me find something. Uh, for example, this one, there's so many vehicles now. If for some reason I don't want this line anymore, I can actually send them all to the depot and sell them. Send all vehicles to the depot and sell on arrival. I can just click it here and send everyone in line 16. Or if I want to change them all, yeah, or if I want to, I can just send them all to the depot for some reason if I want to change them manually. Generally, the easiest thing to do is to go to the uh, to the line itself. So for example, uh, I don't know, line 16 and say replacements and stick it to 25% and then uh, choose what type of vehicle I'd like. And any, any vehicle within 25% will automatically replace itself, which means much earlier than it's supposed to. But this way you can upgrade in case you're playing from the 19, whatever, 80s, and then you're working your way up. So in case I don't want to wait a long time and I want to replace them all quickly, you can actually do that. So uh, another point, when you supply the city with the demanded resources, the actual specialized sector grows so let me give you an example um, if we move down to Downey right and we take the the layout here so if I'm transporting anything for the industrial sector it means bricks uh, whatever the hell that is uh, machines and fuel if I keep transporting fuel the, the the industry grows grows and grows and grows it pushes out uh, all the other industries so that's why you see it specialized and if I transport stuff into the commercial sector the commercial sector starts to increase and, and expands like within its own location. So that's why at some point uh, when you start to transport only things into the industrial zone, you see industry it becomes only industry and same as the commerce. In case you don't have the actual drop off point specialized, like you have the trucks that are dropping off whatever it can pick up. Uh, for example, food and fuel and whatever and dropping off in the same location, you're going to actually start to see buildings mixed up like commercial and industrial. That's why I still have it slightly mixed up because I was doing that for quite a little bit and then I specialized them to drop off only fuel here and only food here. And they slowly wither away, they sort of like the industry eats up, all the other pushes them out and it only becomes industry, so on and so forth. So you can, uh, you can actually do that in case you'd like to do that. Now, in terms of efficiently setting up the city, the city always grows. And I tried many, many ways to stop it from growing because otherwise I got to keep redoing the lines and keep removing the lines, uh, the actual bus lines that I have. Now, what I said in my previous tutorial, it is true you can use the bus lines to drop off actual cargo. And that's what I'm doing actually in all my cities that I actually have a specific industrial line and I have a specific commercial line where I drop off only industry and only commerce. So this is my, I call the Maple Industrial Street. So only my industrial stuff drops off there. Let me go in slow. And then I have my commercial street where only my, my commerce stuff drops off. So here it is. So all my trucks only come here and nothing else. So I don't use these ones for anything else. I don't use them for, for transporting passengers. Now the most efficient way to set up a city is to set stations that cover pretty much all the city, all corners of the city, and literally have a, a tram going towards that and out of the city towards every single one individually, there and out, there and out, there and out. And then you're gonna create a tram that goes around all of them clockwise and another one counterclockwise. 
Now, you're not going to be making much money there, but who cares? It's mainly just to make sure that all the citizens can be transported through without through in the town and getting out of the town. And now, why is that more efficient? Because if someone wants, uh, generally what most people do is maybe have just a circular tram going outwards and going back in and through all the stops. But if this guy just wants to get out, he has to stop off at three different locations and then get out. And of course, that means the tram is going to be filled up with passengers that don't want to leave at that stop. And so you have a filled tram that's not really used until it's there. So I found this to be a little bit more efficient and of course it costs a little bit more, but it transports the citizens out of the town much quicker to use individually each of them. So it's going to be somehow your final vision is to have all these points and having just trams going to that line and out, that line and out, that line and out, and then have a counterclockwise and clockwise uh, actual rotation throughout them. And of course, the moment you transport them out, you can use buses to move them to your hub or to the, the trains that you're having your actual circuit with and the circuit just transports it all over the place. So uh, yeah, that's uh, literally every single town has that that I have. I have literally a, a hub where all the trams come out and drop them off and then I have a, a inter-town bus line that drops them off to my exchange. But if you have a circuit to route the trains, that pretty much does it as well. Also I'd recommend is to have an industry line that goes into your town but in a different location because you don't want to clog up the actual road and get it uh, full of traffic which it already is so i generally try to to put my industry from another location of the town to try to get it in now i notice you've been noticing that i have these crazy hills around and why because i've been trying various ways to stop the town from expanding because otherwise it's a, it's a never-ending process of moving all my stations every time to adjust in accordance to the size of the town so of course increasing the the, the height of the terrain never helped but uh, what did help is putting tram tracks around it so if i go to my newer version of trying to stop the town from growing which i pretty much used a big dense road a large uh, a large road followed by tram tra uh, train tracks of course the cheapest ones the uh, standard tracks because you do pay maintenance for all of them which is another tip by the way in case you're putting down roads and trains and actual depots for buses and trains and you're not using them please demolish them because you are paying maintenance fees for them so property maintenance so it's nothing crazy but you are paying maintenance for them and if you want to play efficient there's no point to do it but uh, so what i did is here I realized because the hills don't do anything and they still expand over the hills is I built a massive thingy even though that they still replace the road but it doesn't matter and then I put train tracks all the way around it and if I see that there's a road going out I put it in parallel to prevent any building and if I see that there's a road going there I also put a road in front of it to prevent them to stick it out so this is new actually but this one I saw it so I shoved this here so I can't so they can't build out of town and so far, this has been a very successful way of stopping them from expanding the town. So I know it's going to reach this size, and I'm hoping it'll force it to only upgrade the things in the town. So I'll have only massive skyscrapers throughout the whole town. I don't want to have to deal with moving all my bus lines around like crazy every single time it decides to upgrade something. So, uh, of course, I didn't want to be bothered to spend a lot of time and uh, downgrading or uh, reducing my hills. So I just built around them. And in case there was any road going out, I prevented it with another line with a horizontal line or an angled line so they can't build through because the AI won't be able to build a road there so I somehow keep them in this actual town blocked off so uh, this is again another tip for you guys in case you really want to get it as efficient as possible you know define the town size and uh, block them in build a massive road around which is nice generally it's fine and then block them in and uh, that way you can focus down on the town itself so in terms of trains now for the train park right there's no point to build a fast train uh, if it's not needed. Hence, I have a train ride from here to here. Now, initially I built one of the fastest, most expensive trains and then I realized it's completely pointless. First of all, I never get to top speed because the train requires time to accelerate. If you see here, 96, 97, 98, and now it's gonna slow down anyways. 100, and it's gonna slow down anyways. 101, where is it? Oh no, it's actually increasing because going up. Yeah, but it's slowing down when it goes into town. So this train can go at 140 kilometers an hour maximum, right? So of course it has 3,000 if I go to the details. It has, uh, where was it? It's 3,000 kilowatts of power. So of course if I put in one which has 6,000 watts of kilo, uh, kilowatts of power, it'll speed up faster, right? It won't take so long, but it'll never reach its maximum speed and it's completely pointless because each of these has a maintenance cost. So this guy's maintenance cost is like around I think it's it's one of the cheaper versions. Uh, this is the cheapest one I could possibly have. This guy has a maintenance cost of 1.2 million a year. 
right? So if you divide that by 12, that's what you get per month, which you're paying. I'm paying around, I think, 380 or something, whatever the hell pops up. So, but if you get this guy, you know, it's already 1.74 a year. And if you get the most expensive guy, that's 2.7 million a year. That is absolutely insane. So there's no point to build the fastest train if you realize that you're never going to go fast enough, right? And uh, in terms of the train tracks, these are the most efficiently, you take a look at part one. I explained it all there. Again, guys, take a look at part one. And another thing to keep in mind is there's no point to buy an extremely, extremely fast train, right? If you're planning to transport, I don't know, the uh, passengers, right? Because, for example, this one can transport 33 passengers, but the max speed is only 140 kilometers an hour. So there's sure as hell is no point to buy a train that can go at 200 kilometers an hour, right? If, first of all, my tracks don't support that. And if they do, if I really have such a very long track where I can actually reach that top speed, I won't be able to because the actual cargo uh, tractors, whatever the hell you want to call them, that I stick to it, doesn't even support that speed. So always be sure the actual top speed of the things that you're attaching to it. So for example, fuel 160, this 160, pretty much all the cargo 160, massive passenger 140. I believe the only one is this one that goes at 201 kilometers an hour, right? So even your 300 kilometers an hour is not even supported by the by the actual uh, cargo attachments that you're going to be st sticking on, being industrial or passengers, whatever the hell it is. So just uh, just keep that in mind that uh, it's not really worth it to build even a very efficient track that goes to 300 kilometers an hour. You're never going to get that speed so far. With the mods, you'll of course be able to have a train that probably reaches that speed. But with the default game, no, you will not be able to get that. So. Uh, uh, there you go. So the other thing is, is that uh, one of the biggest fails in the game, I finally realized, is not that uh, to use the trains as quick as possible, unfortunately, is uh, this is the one thing that I came from OpenTTD and I believe most people like OpenTTD because it's the freedom of being able to design the production line any way you want. Unfortunately, this game has a very nice concept and a very nice idea, and I enjoy it a lot. But the biggest limitation that I see here, and why you're probably failing, is that even though I have a train that fills up to the maximum every time, right? And every time goes back down, right? Like, for example, for example, these guys, they always fill up. I have maximum production of 1,600. Now I was mucking about, so I think it's a little bit lower. It's much lower, 1,000, yeah. But it was 1,600. And even though it was always filled up, right? always filled up to the maximum because I was doing different queue lines which I'm gonna get to explain to you now every time these two trains popped in they got 306 and they came back and they dropped it off but I was always losing money as you see I'm in 77 so last year was a fluke but I was always losing money now the, re the reason behind this is if the train doesn't is not loaded on the way there and on the way back the high maintenance cost will always make it lose money Hence why most people, or nearly all people playing this game, are forced to create these sort of loops all the time, where you just pile on, uh, pile on drop-off points, and try to like fill up the train while it's going in this loop. And this is, I think, the biggest limitation that I see with this type of game mechanic that they have designed. That with buses you can somehow get away with it because the maintenance cost is low and you always make a profit. With trucks as well. But the moment you want to use trains, you got to make sure that the train is always loaded on the way there and on the way back. Because even though I had them fully loaded at 306 when they picked up and dropped off, not anymore because I'm testing something out mainly for tutorial, which I'm going to explain to you right now. But uh, you'll always lose money. So there's absolutely no point that you're going to have a massive train. Uh, I, got, I, got guy, I got trains here. I'm nearly going to reach the 1,600 mark, right? But still, if I look at the finances, I'm getting 2.1 million this year. Probably going to get a little bit more. But before I had trucks, and the trucks were getting me around 6 million for the same track. The only problem is with the trucks is that I couldn't, I couldn't reach the limit of 1,600 because one of, one of the stations wasn't it. So what I'm starting to do now is I realize that having two trains, even though they're full, I'm still losing money. But what I'm starting to realize is better if it's just a one-way thing, screw it. Just make two truck lines which will be able to supply the 1,600, right? capacity and have two completely independent truck lines so you don't have traffic and two completely independent stops so they're not they're not like conflicting with each other so if it is just this thing then i would suggest you go with truck lines if you can't like guarantee the the train's going to be way uh, full two ways you're screwed so another reason is when i had the train full i was thinking of okay let me, let me replace this ant line that i have all the way with the fuel line no with the train 
But again, the train's gonna be going there full and back empty. So even though I'm making, let's say in this line, I don't know, five or six million, hell, I'll be lucky if I even make two million. So this is another thing why people are failing drastically, guys. If you're using trains, make sure they're full both ways. And the only way to do that, unfortunately, the only gameplay you're gonna get out of this is to make circuit lines. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, any YouTube video that you see out there pretty much plays the same. You have a line from here to passengers, to passengers, to passengers, to passengers, no? And all it does just keeps going around and around and around. And you pretty much have the same line with the, the, uh, the industry. And what you do is you have, let's say, a stop here and you, you drop off fuel, you drop off whatever you can in that location and try to fill up that train when it goes to the other town. And then you have like a, a drop off in the middle, for example, and you can try to drop off as many resources to refill that train before it goes to another town, depending on what is close by. And this is the only limitation that I see with this mechanic is that you're always forced to play this way. Unlike OpenTTD, you are very free to play, you know, so... Uh, that's something I'm not very happy with because really it sort of screws me up and I'm forced to play that way if I want to enjoy the trains. And I don't like that at all. Anyways, let's move on to another point. So uh, the bus stops, this is why I screwed up this line, uh, was to explain to you the whole bus stop thing. Now, the bus stops, the large one, can actually supply up to four, four lines. So you can literally supply up to four lines to the bus stop. And of course, these lines means that uh, they will be able to, I'm trying to catch the other one, They'll be able to come into the bus area, into four different locations, right? And uh, drop off and pick up the goods. Now, the most efficient way, I would say, is to do it with two lines, because still the entrance and the exit of the bus stop is still very narrow, and there's no way to upgrade that, right? But as you see, the red line goes from the outside in and the whatever purple line goes from the inside out All right so somehow this is supposed to be more efficient so you can use more lines with this and I decided to test that out right because I hypothetically thought well okay that means that'll be less traffic but that's bullshit because the entrance is still so narrow it doesn't change shit so uh, I'm sure with the mods there's gonna be more bus stops but with the default ones it's not really worth using even two lines on one of these bus stops even though it can support up to four because you're still gonna get backlogged with traffic because of the entrance and another recommendation is to actually keep the bus stops further away from the road because if in case later on you want to upgrade the road you won't be able to so that's why there there generally is quite a bit of spacing from the start but because these are the final roads it's not a problem at all so uh, that is another point uh, now what else is there? You have the M and the N, of course, is if you want to place down stuff, is to rot rotate it, right? M and N. This literally works for everything, right? Now, another cool thing is that I'm sure you guys probably know or should know is that you can use M and N also to increase and decrease altitude. So that's uh, just another, another point before I go is that uh, on the top right, you have alerts. Now, the alerts, of course, show you if you move your mouse on top of them that uh, they've been disconnected or they show you that uh, the time is very very long for example in this line i exactly have it 45 seconds but because it is exactly 45 seconds it's still displaying it there the cool thing with this is if you guys are having problems is that uh, in terms of the industry it also shows you in case an industry requires you to transport more stuff out of it so you can actually see the truck or the train it'll tell you look guys you need to transport more crude or you need to transport more fuel now here's another thing why you might understand that you're failing is that wait a moment but it's saying transport more fuel but if I look here, uh, all my fuel is being transported or all my bread's being transported or all my whatever is being transported. I don't, I can't transport anymore. So if you can zoom into the location, all my grains being transported. Well, if you are really transporting everything, that means you're not transporting enough to the cities to sell or you're not tr transporting enough to more cities. So either you have a massive stockpile of, I don't know, bread somewhere that you're not selling fast enough or uh, that could not be the case that you need to sell to more cities so you need to start setting up and selling to more cities uh, your uh, goods and service your goods your industrial goods so that'll of course crank up the line now another good way to know of how things are going is if you go to details uh, a good way to, to know if things are going down is that uh, the potential of the product I have uh, 2840 so I have customers for 2,840, which is great. Anything above 1,600 is perfect because your limit is 1,600. 
So always try to get your potential of whatever the hell you're trying to do above 1,600 because then you know that you'll never get the notification that, oh my God, you need to sell more. So compared to what you're producing, you're producing 400, but your potential is 300. Well, you don't have the customers to sell already 400. Another thing, if the storage goes to zero, if the grain goes to zero, the actual production facility will reset and it'll go down in terms of production. So keep an eye out for that. Of course, it'll tell you, you get notifications, please transport more grain, please transport more food and fuel. So yeah. uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed another quick tips and tricks in regards to this gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you seal in the town so they don't expand. You can transport everyone out. Hope you enjoy it. Unfortunately, you are going to have to be playing a loop-based game, whether you like it or not, at some point. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be losing money. But uh, yeah, uh, good luck. Enjoy the game. Let me know in case you have any other tips and tricks I might have forgot about. But that's pretty much it. Again, I'm going to be thinking about, if you're going to be watching my Let's Play series, I'm probably going to switch this back to two truck lines again because it's completely pointless. I'm making nearly triple the amount with trucks. And uh, I can't have it both ways filled. So yeah, whatever. Happy gaming. See you guys. Bye-bye.